Interfaces used to be an important topic on the APCSA exam, but about, I want to say, two or three years before COVID, at some point, the College Board made a tactical decision to greatly simplify the APCSA exam. Before they had done that, there were three or four other topics on the exam. There was interfaces. We taught interfaces for a good two or three weeks. There was also another topic called abstract base classes. There were other smaller one-hour topics that were on the exam also. And the College Board decided that the APCSA exam was just too complicated and it was too challenging and they were, now they're obviously motivated by volume. They want to have as many students take the test as possible and the CSA exam was stuck at around 70 to 80,000 students for forever. And they wanted to make it a little bit more open to a larger group of students. So as I mentioned, like two or three years before COVID, they decided to simplify the exam by taking a bunch of topics and removing them from the curriculum. And I think, as a, speaking as a CSA teacher, and I, I think when I speak to other CSA teachers, a lot of them agree with me that most of the other topics that they removed, we agreed, were not any major loss. We were surprised, shocked, that interfaces was being removed because it seemed at the time, and frankly still seems in some cases, a really, really important part of the course. And so uh, we were kind of surprised that they were just kind of eliminating this. And they were uh, basically taking away what we thought was a pretty large topic. Now, I should mention that I'm going to go into interfaces quite deeply in data structures next year for those of you who are taking it. But I know that many of you are not taking data structures, some of you are graduating, whatever, and I want you to have at least a basic understanding of interfaces and why they're so important. And that's why I'm sort of ending this course on this important topic. So let me, first of all, switch sub subjects a little bit and um, describe this board that we're working with here. It's been installed recently by this company called Promethean. While we were out to lunch, I don't know anything about Promethean, so while you were out to lunch, I was looking them up. They started in England, and they now appear to have moved their headquarters to Seattle, Washington. And so they make these boards, and I can't tell you how happy I am with this board. It's just been a fantastic experience. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about an unusual topic. I want to talk about this remote control right here, which controls the Promethean board. And although I don't know for sure, I strongly suspect that when Promethean was looking to get a remote control for their board, it is highly, highly unlikely that they designed and developed this particular remote control. It is far more likely that they went somewhere to find a company that makes remote controls and then work with them to make sure that the remote control that this other company provided, who is a no-name company, by the way, you see that their name is not on this remote, it's Promethean's name on the remote control. And so let me start by asking you some questions. First, this other company that Promethean probably contacted to get their remote control from, what country do you think that other country, that other company is in? Somebody raise their hand and take a guess. Okay, Mr. Snee, what do you think? It's probably in China. And so they got on a plane and they sent a bunch of their engineers over to China to this remote control company. Who knows which one, right? And then when they got there, they said, yeah, we build these uh, smart boards for teachers and we need this remote control over here. And these are the features that we want. And so then the remote control company probably like took them to their warehouse of remote controls. And I'm sure there's like a giant display there somewhere that says, 50 different types of remote controls and said, okay, which one would you like to use for your application? And probably something either like this or exactly like this was in the display case and said, hey, well, this looks like it's pretty good. It's got uh, seven buttons. It's got a little wheel here for going changing direction. And then it's got a little power button on the top. This will probably work fine. And so their engineers probably said, okay, this looks like this will do the job. <laughs> now, the next question I have for you is, why do you think Promethean would not want to build and make their own remote controls? Why do you think they would want to go to China to get their remote control offering? So um, 
Mr. Manesar, I think you said a, a good word there. Can you tell us why you think that the Promethean company probably went to this unknown Chinese company to get their remote control? Okay, so this other company in China, they specialize in remote controls. H here's the issue. Uh, how many remote controls do you think Promethean sells? Not that many, right? These things go for like a couple of thousand dollars each, and so they don't sell that many. The remote control company, how many remote controls do you think they sell? They sell a lot, right? Probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions. We don't know. And so it's just much cheaper for the remote control company to get a band of engineers together, build a few remotes, and then sell them to various companies than it is for Promethean to run around, hire some engineers to build this remote control and have to service it and provide support for it for how many, however many years this product is out there. It's not cost efficient for Promethean to make their own remote controls. So they have decided they're going to hire this company to make their remote controls for them. And that's perfectly reasonable because that's what this remote control company does for a living. They sell their remote controls. Now, just so you understand, the software that is going to be sitting in this remote control when this board is being designed doesn't actually exist yet, right? Because the software has to be custom made to work with this board. So who do you think is going to write that software? Do you think the engineers at the Promethean company are going to write it? Or do you think the engineers at the remote control company are going to write it? What do you think? Software to control this board. I think the engineers at the Promethean company are probably going to write most of it because why? That's their job. They're Promethean. They, they build software for smart boards. The remote control company, they know about remote controls, but they don't know anything about smart boards. So it's most likely that the Promethean engineers are going to have to write the software. And now we're starting to develop a problem because now there are some issues because we want to make sure that the software that the Promethean engineers are going to write for this remote control is going to work. And most importantly, we want to make sure that nothing has been forgotten. Now, there's some barriers here between the two companies, and I would like you to discuss again with your partner what some of these barriers are. Okay, Ms. Ria, can you name one barrier that the two, two sets of engineers face? Language is a barrier. Okay, so probably the Promethean folks speak in English, and the Chinese engineers probably speak Mandarin, so that's an important barrier. What's another barrier? Distance is a barrier, and it's a barrier for two reasons. First of all, if the engineers want to see each other for some reason, like to exchange circuit boards or something, you can see that they have to get on a plane and go all the way over. But the distance also creates a second barrier. It's the other barrier that it creates. It creates a time barrier. See that, right? Because when the engineers in China are going to sleep, the engineers in Seattle, Washington are waking up. And so they're going to have an issue there. So one possibility is that the engineers in China could put together a document, which is sort of like uh, an interface document. And I'll talk about what that word means in a second. And they could write in that document all the stuff that they want the engineers in Promethean to do. Like make sure, okay, when the, you know, when the device first powers up, you have to refresh these memory locations with these values, and you have to check the battery supply to make sure it's sufficient to continue, and all this stuff, right? Now, the problem with having such a document is we've already discussed there's like a language barrier and things like that. So it is entirely possible that there could be like a misunderstanding between the engineers in China and the engineers in Seattle, Washington, and something could slip through the cracks. And what I mean by that is the project could go merrily along. They could ship the Promethean boards and the remote controls, and all of a sudden, like six months down the road, they find out, oh, uh, we forgot to you know, program one of the buttons, or this button is supposed to do this thing, but it really does a different thing. And now you have a disaster on your hands because now these products are like spread all over God's creation, right? And now you have to recall them. It, there could be a lot of money lost here for Promethean because they didn't really understand how they were supposed to program this device. What we really want is we want a more foolproof way to make sure that nothing gets lost or misunderstood. Now, nothing's going to be 100% effective, but one thing that would be really, really nice to do is if there was some way we could get the compiler, notice I said compiler, to check to make sure that every single method that needs to be written for this device has actually been written. So what we want is we want the engineers in China to write a document, but this time the document is not written in Microsoft uh, Word. What's the document written in? It's written in Java or written in code, some other language. It's written in code. 
The document is written in code. That document is called an interface. And what it contains is a list of all the procedures or methods that need to be written by uh, the, 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 the Promethean company. And maybe a little comments on top of each one describing what each procedure should do. So now this is an important interface. I wanted to describe to you some other interfaces, some other interfaces. So I brought some up here on my screen. This is what's known as a boogie board. You've probably never seen this. This has been made by a company called Wacom. And a lot of teachers use this to make videos. So what happens is you plug this into your computer. And then when you write on here, the writing shows up on there. So it's really useful for that. I'll give you some examples of other interfaces that you're probably more familiar with. This one here. And this one you're all familiar with, of course. This one right here. right? And there are some other interfaces here also, specifically these. But these are analog interfaces. We're not as concerned about analog interfaces in this course. We're more interested in the digital interfaces like these. right? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce this concept of an interface. Just keep thinking to yourselves about the Chinese company that's making the remote control and the Promethean company that's going to have to write code for the remote control. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start a, a little project now. And we're going to first pretend that we're the Chinese company that's making the interface document. And then we'll come over to the other side and we'll pretend that we're the Promethean company and we're going to fill out the code for the interface. Okay?